Let's do a small experiment in Bitwig and perhaps we can find something curious about uh, some of the random devices inside of it. Hi, welcome to the channel and I should probably say up front that this is the first spoken video I've ever done for YouTube, so if anything goes wrong you'll know why. I am here in Bitwig 4.4 and we will move to Bitwig uh, 5.0 in a second. But for now, being here, I have a... this is an empty project with uh, just a small plug in Vital. Yep, I hope it's uh, unoffensive enough. And we will be using it to play a very, very short melody. And the melody is going to come from the note grid. We will create in the note grid like a most basic, most rudimentary, very, very simple uh, generative patch. Uh, we will start with the dice devices, of which we'll take four. They will generate random values that will turn into four different notes, uh, which we're going to hear. Uh, in order to trigger these random values, we'll take the transport. So as soon as I press play as soon as I start the transport. This device will trigger the dice. Each of them will generate its own uh, random value and uh, we will play them in turn. Now, in order to play them in turn, we will connect them to a merge device with four steps. And we will drive this merge device with a phase so that we will hear the four notes occurring over 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 the course of uh, one bar since this is pitch let's make it orange and uh, obviously the dice devices create fractional numbers between zero and one uh, we need to coerce them into pitches so let's go to pitch and first pick a scalar and we can keep to these simplest basic uh, settings here, except for the pitch quantizer that we need to uh, ask kindly to restrict notes to, let's take C major scale, that's going to be fine. And this is the pitch that we will be hearing. We probably also want to see what notes are being played, so let's take a value readout, set it to semitones, and also connect it to uh, the pitch pitches that we will be getting. The last thing we need is, uh, of course, the uh, a gates device, which is right here. We need four of these. Make small pulses. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so before that happens, now let me disconnect the. Uh, for now. We will be driving the gates from the same phase, of course, so that the gates and the merge devices are synchronized. But what just happened? We don't want this to happen. So um, let's go into logic, take the end logic gate, and we will require that the gates will be emitted to the note output device only when transport is playing. That way, when we start playback, the sounds will start happening, but not before that. Okay, um, so here it is, and what I can do right now, um, there is yeah, there is one other thing I need to do for the purpose of this exercise or experiment that we are running. I will save this project now, and I need to restart Bitwig. You will see this happen a few times today because if I didn't do that uh, the whole experiment would uh, kind of fall apart. So we are still in Bitwig 4.4 as you can see and we are in the node grid. I can use this time to tell you immediately that everything I'm showing you here works exactly the same way in uh, all three of uh, the grids in Bitwig. It works the same way in the node grid but also in the poly grid and in the effects grid uh, it doesn't matter which grid you are using. So here it is. We are ready. Uh, I can zoom it in perhaps uh, for you to see a little better. And I wanted to make a prediction. Now this is a generative setup, a little generative patch. 
each of these dice devices will create a random note for us. We shouldn't know what these notes are going to be, but I think I know. I think these notes are going to be B, D, B, and G. Now I will start transport and let's see if I was correct. B, D, B, G. Yeah. I don't need to save the project right now. I will close it again with my prediction confirmed and uh, reopen Bitwig again. Reopen the same project again. I'm closing this bottom panel so that I can zoom in uh, for the sake of uh, clarity of the video and uh, let's try again. Hmm. Yeah. B, D, B, G. Uh, okay, uh, we can act, what we can actually do right now is we can say, so this is the sequence that we are getting. Uh, let's take a label. And let's say BDBG. That's the sequence that we were getting. Now, without closing Bitwig, let's uh, try again. Let's play another sequence. The transport device here will send another trigger to the dice devices. Each of them will generate a new random number. So we should get a different sequence. Let's see what it is. G E A E G E A E I think this is what uh, this is what I am uh, seeing so we can clone this guy here and we can say the second sequence was G E A E oops G E A E G E A E is correct uh, can we try it again? Sure we can. A, D, G, F. A, D, G, F. Let's put it down here. A, B, G, and F. Okay, so we have these three sequences that were generated in turn. I'm going to save the project just to keep these uh, labels here. And... Uh, why not try again? Yeah, what you saw was my predictions there. Um, starting the project for the first time. BDBG, of course. I've pressed stop, and now let's uh, play again. G-E-A-E, G-E-A-E, -E, that's exactly what we got the second time. And now for the third time, Should, are we going to get A-D-G-F? Let's see. A-D-G-F, right. So it seems that the random devices here that are supposed to generate random numbers that should technically be unpredictable and unique uh, aren't really doing their job, are they? Every time we open the project in a fresh instance of Bitwig, we are getting the same sequences in turn. Now, each of these sequences itself seems random enough. It is unpredictable. It is, you know, it can, it can, it can continue for a long time and play, and it will play random notes. It will not start repeating itself as it plays. It will always continue in unpredictable ways. However, when you close the project and reopen it in a fresh instance of Bitwig, you will see, you will hear the same sequence replay from the beginning in exactly the same way. Now, it doesn't matter if your random generative project is as that, that simple as, uh, as this one or if it's beautifully complex and sophisticated and, and you can use 
uh, and you are using random devices to drive a pitch or gates or or uh, effects, the filter cutoff or the phase even, whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, the Apparently, the random values that these devices generate are always going to be the same. And they are always going to repeat. Uh, what we can do now is we can reopen this project again, but now we'll switch to Bitwig 5. So let's see if we observe the same behavior in Bitwig 5. It's loading. And here we are in the very same patch. In Bitwig 4, the first sequence we got was BDBG. Let's now play and see what we get this time. E, D, B, G. Okay, almost the same, but not quite, is it? Um, so let's put it right next to this. Uh, this is E, D, B, G this time, and we can name these columns. This was Bitwig 4, and this is Bitwig 5. The first sequence, almost the same, slightly different. Uh, let's play again and see what happens previously. The sequence was G E A E. Hmm. This time it's uh, the same G E A E. No change. And once more for the last sequence that we tested previously, A D G F is what we got. D D G F. DDGF this time. Almost the same, but again, not quite. DDGF. This is what we get. Right, so there are some slight differences in the behaviors of Bitwig 4 and 5, but in both versions the essential thing remains. The random sequences uh, are not entirely random, and we are seeing the same thing. And let's try something else. I've made a different test for this behavior. Really very simple. Just a bunch of, actually these are buttons, but they can double as light indicators, which is very nice. These are dice devices again. Each of these dice devices is hooked up to a modulator and the modulator either lights up a button or it doesn't. It lights up a button if it receives a trigger. And the trigger depends on the value that the dice device will generate. If it generates a value below 0.5, it will not trigger and the light will stay off. If it generates a value 0.5 or higher, it will trigger the light and we will see a pattern of these lights, a random pattern of these lights uh, here. This is all hooked up to the transport, so when I press play, we'll see a pattern like this. Okay, does it look like anything much? Not really. Uh, we can just try to remember it. And um, yeah, reopen this project very quickly. Come on, Bitwig. Okay, and uh, let's try it again. Of course, we are seeing the same pattern that we saw before and the second time or well, the second time what is it looks like an elongated triangle maybe that's the second pattern that we have stop and play again okay another triangle but uh, reverse this time let's see if uh, this is what we are going to get again from Bitwig the reason I'm introducing these lights is that it's sort of easier to see without listening to uh, little annoying musical patterns and uh, we will still be looking at uh, two other random devices in just a moment so let's try it again the first pattern exactly the same as before the second pattern the elongated triangle and number three the same pattern another triangle okay so we have confirmed that dice devices are producing repeating sequences but what about um, the chance device. 
another very useful device in Betwig, which uh, receives a trigger and either produces a trigger or does not, depending on the probability that we can set from 0 to 100%. By default, the probability is, of course, uh, 50%. Uh, this project is just minimally more involved than the previous one because, uh, as, as you know, when chance produces a trigger on the output here, the trigger is very short. It's a momentary spike of signal. It will light up the button, but for such a short time that we would never be able to notice it. In order for us to be able to notice it, I'm sending the trigger to a latch device and the trigger will just permanently switch the latch on and then the light will stay on if uh, the trigger was received. Uh, the reset here just lets me reset all those latches again so we can rerun uh, the test later on. So now we are testing chance devices and I will press play and this is the pattern we get. What is it? Like a number four. Uh, let's try it again. I will have to reset the lights first and uh, play again. Okay, this is the second pattern. Let's say it's like a small triangle on the top and a line on the bottom. And let's try it once more. Oh, I forgot to reset. So I'm afraid this doesn't count. I forgot to, to reset uh, the latches. But we have the first two patterns that we saw and we can uh, and we will test if these patterns will also recur when we run the project again. So here we are, press play. Yeah, the num number four, if you remember, that's the pattern that we saw the first time and the second time, no, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I again forgot to, uh, to reset. I should have made it automatic, it's possible. Uh, decided not to bother with that and now I'm bothering you for your time uh, with this silliness. But here we are again. The number four. Reset. Play again. The tri small triangle on top and the little line on the bottom. Okay, we won't be staying with these uh, chance guys anymore, but we have identified another Bitwig device that does not produce, does not seem to produce truly random values. The last device that I want to show you that unfortunately does have the same behavior is the probabilities device. And as soon as the project is open, uh, well, this one looks a little more complicated, just a little. Uh, the reason for that is that, well, this is the probabilities device. It has, by default, eight steps, which I've set, I've set all of them to roughly 50%. It's perhaps not precisely, but it's either 49 or 51. It's just, they're all just about 50% probability. But now it's like, instead of one chance device, we have eight chance devices, which run in sequence driven by the phase over the course of uh, one bar. <clears throat> so what you'll notice, of course, is that the lights will not light up all at the same time like before. They will light up, or not, gradually as the phase progresses, as the single bar uh, runs. Um, there is another thing that um, I needed to take care of here, which is that, of course, when the phase runs its course, it restarts and a new bar plays, and this device, probabilities, continues to generate new random values which would go to the latches and would uh, keep lighting up our lights. We don't want that, we only want to see it happen the first time. So, as, uh, as you know, the phase is a number from 0 to almost 1, so we can detect when the phase ends by comparing it, comparing the value of phase to constant 1. When that happens, the latch will trigger this selector. It, the selector will switch from this first uh, slot here to the second slot, but the second slot is empty. It has nothing connected to its input, so nothing will be sent to the latches. The triggers from these, uh, from these eight steps of the probabilities will only be sent here 
uh, over the course of bar one. And after that, nothing else will be sent. So we will be able to see the pattern generated from that one bar. Um, so let's do it now. Okay. Um, this is the shape we get, like an incomplete plus sign, maybe. Or you can see there's a triangle standing on one of its corners. Okay, let's uh, just to be certain that probabilities behaves like the chance and the dice devices. Let's rerun this project just once more. Uh, and uh, see if we get the same pattern reset. Just a moment until the bar is over. And here it is. The same pattern and again uh, I won't be doing it again because we've been uh, we've been at it for quite a while by now but uh, you can do it yourself in Bitwig in the grid and you'll see that regardless of your Bitwig version at least in version 4 and 5 is where I have observed this behavior uh, this is what happens um, is it a bug or is it an intended feature I have no idea I have no way of knowing it uh, I can tell you that I have emailed Bitwig about this and they replied very kindly uh, saying two things. First, they confirmed that this is indeed how these random devices behave in the grid. And the second thing they told me was that they put it on their to-do list. Now that seems like good news, but doesn't tell us much in terms of when we can expect a fix. Is it going to be rather sooner or is it going to be rather later? I do think it should come rather sooner. I mean, I hope it comes rather sooner because let's uh, think for a moment about the consequences of this. Uh, if you're aware that this is uh, the way these devices behave, um, then I guess it's okay. You know what you are doing and you can find ways to work around it. Spoiler, yes, there is a workaround. We can, we can get true randomness in Bitwig just not by using these three random devices. Uh, I will get to that in a moment. But um, if you don't know about it, and honestly, the, 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 the one reason I'm recording this video is that I haven't seen or heard anyone mention it ever. Has anyone noticed it? Maybe everyone knows about it and I'm just uh, uh, being silly here, but um, I don't know. Uh, no one has ever talked about it that, that I know of. And, uh, and so what happens if you don't know about it? You can create a generative patch that is based on uh, some randomness. Again, maybe you are using randomness to generate melodies or rhythms or patterns or, or to control effects. And you should be able to expect, I suppose, that uh, because it's random, then every time you play your patch, you're going to get something new, something different, something unique something that uh, you didn't hear before and you probably won't hear uh, ever again. Well, that is not the case. As you can see, every time, and not, no matter how complex or sophisticated your patch is, if you are using these three devices uh, to add some randomness to your generative patch, you will get the same exact pattern repeating over and over um, every time. And if you play your patch for 63 times and then you close Bitwig and you reopen Bitwig and you play it start and stop and start and stop 63 times your 63rd sequence is going to be exactly the same as the 63rd sequence when you were working in Bitwig previously um, well that's that's the deal which I think it's a, it, it is a problem because of that. Because if you don't know about it, you, you may think you're creating something new and unique, but in fact, uh, that is not necessarily the case. So, um, I said there is a workaround. I'm going to make a separate video about uh, the workaround, about how to replace these three devices that don't give us true randomness with other devices. That actually do uh, but I'm not going to be obviously making a mystery out of that I just want to say that uh, chance and come here and dice and uh, probabilities are no longer my friends uh, noise and sample and hold LFO 
are now my best friends. Uh, that is true. Uh, these two devices appear to be generating truly random, truly unique, non-repeating sequences. Uh, the SHLFO is of course a little more complicated. Usually noise should be enough for everything you need. But how exactly to replace each of these three devices with just noise? I'll talk about it in a second video. I want to thank so much to all of you who are still with me uh, right now. And so thank you very much for watching. And uh, till the next time.